My name is Laura. I'm a nurse. After another busy day at work, I head home as usual. I got home a little late today. I'm home. Welcome back. When I returned home, I was greeted by my daughter Meg. It must be very lonely for a third grader to wait at home alone every day. Whenever I see Meg, I always feel sorry for her. But still, I suppose I get envied by other nurses as I work at the town's hospital that doesn't have any night shifts. Where's your dad today? He hasn't come home yet. I wonder when he'll be back. I feel like I haven't seen dad for a long time. Oh, I see. My husband Stan is basically a workaholic and rarely comes home. I don't even remember him spending any time with us, like eating together, or even doing the house chores. Well, no, actually, to be precise, he does spend time with the family, other than Meg and I. On his days off, he'd go to his mom's house to pull weeds in the garden for her, clean the house, and have dinner with her. Stan never showed up at Meg's soccer practices or spelling bee contests to support her. Even though he was devoted to his parents, and because of this, my husband and I don't get along very well at all. I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry for making you feel lonely all the time. I'm fine. You come home every day, mom, so that's enough. Oh, Meg. I hugged Meg tightly. If we were a normal family, we'd spend our time with each other, and we would have been a happy family. No matter how many times I apologize to her, I know that it'll never be enough. How and why did things turn out this way? Then one day, Stan came back home at a normal time, which was very rare. But both Meg and I's love and affection for Stan had decreased, and we didn't talk much. While we all ate dinner in silence, Stan suddenly spoke up. Hey, why don't we go to Hawaii for the upcoming holidays? What? I couldn't believe my ears for a moment. Stan had invited all of us to go on a trip. What in the world was going on? We haven't been able to properly travel as a family in the past few years, right? I thought it would be a great opportunity to celebrate my mother's 60th birthday too, and I thought it might be a good idea once in a while. He puts my mother-in-law first again. I was fed up, but once Hawaii came up, Meg says this: "We can go to Hawaii. I want to go. I really want to go." Meg was very excited and happy. Well, for her, it's her first time going to Hawaii, so it's only natural to react this way. But I don't know if I could enjoy a family trip after all these years. Plus, it was with Kate, my mother-in-law. If it was to celebrate Kate's 60th birthday, I wished Stan would have told me years ago about it. But if my daughter wanted to go, then I thought it was not right for me to refuse. All right, I guess so. It's been a while since we've all been together as a family, so why don't we go? And I nodded my head. On the day of the trip, Stan and I had to work. So we decided to all meet at the airport. On the day, my work was busy and it was beyond my expectations, and I was running very late. After work, I rushed to the airport with Meg. After taking the bus, we finally arrived at the airport. But an unexpected incident happened. They're not here. Both Stan and Kate was nowhere to be seen. I searched around the airport, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Ugh! Where did they go? No one called me on my phone, so I tried calling both Stan and Kate. The number you have dialed is either not powered on right now or has no signal. I kept on hearing this message. Being desperate, I asked the airport staff at the airline's reception desk. Then I was asked, "Are you Miss Laura Martin?" By one of the ground staff. Pardon? Uh, yes. I wondered how the staff knew my name, but then they handed me a piece of paper. I was asked to give this to you. A paper? 
I was stunned to see what was written on the paper. I couldn't wait any longer. It'll just be the two of us going on this trip. Bye, Stan. If you can't be on time, then we won't take you. Why don't you just camp out somewhere around here? Bye, Kate. What is this? Mom, what's wrong? As I was shaking with anger, Meg called out to me anxiously. Oh, no, it's nothing. It looks like your dad and grandma went ahead. I'm sorry. So we can't go to Hawaii? Yes, we can, we can. We can go after them and get on another flight. I tried to answer cheerfully, but to be honest, we don't have enough money for another flight. What am I going to do? While I was thinking of what to do, an old man walking in front of me suddenly collapsed. <gasps> I didn't know what was happening, but my body moved on its own, perhaps because I have been a nurse for many years. Are you okay? I checked his breathing, but it has stopped. Oh my god! I quickly turned the old man's body and secured his airway. When I looked into his mouth, I found something was stuck inside. It most likely is a part of his vomit. This is what's preventing him from breathing. Please, someone, call an ambulance! I shouted and immediately began treatment. Once the ambulance came quickly, the old man was taken to the emergency room where he regained consciousness. Was it you? The one who saved me? Uh, well, yes. I only did a simple procedure, though. That's not true. Thank you so much. I thought I was completely dead. He had recovered enough to be able to have a conversation. There seemed to be no heart or organ problems to begin with. You saved my life. Please let me thank you. I'm James. Oh no, there's no need for that. I just did what everyone would do. By the way, were you traveling somewhere? Oh, yes. I was supposed to go to Hawaii with my daughter, but we couldn't cash the flight. Oh no, that's terrible. It's my fault. I quickly gestured my hand to deny it. Oh no, no. We were already running late and I couldn't make it in time because of my work anyways. So you didn't do anything wrong. I was just thinking that we should go home. I said as I sighed and laughed. But James just looks at me and says this. That's a shame. Your daughter must have been looking forward to it. Why don't you just buy another ticket? Well, I'm a little ashamed to say this, but we don't have enough money right now. When I said this with a sad look on my face, James gave a small nod. Okay then, as my way of thanking you, I'll buy you both the tickets, and the problem will be solved, right? Oh, huh? No, I'm sorry about this. It's completely okay. Hey, you! James called out to a female staff who was just walking by. Then he started calling somewhere with a cell phone he borrowed. Oh, can I talk to you for a minute? James talked to someone for a few minutes and hung up. Oh, um, we're really okay, so... Don't worry about it. If I don't get to thank you in some way, then I won't be able to die peacefully. At that moment, the paper fell out of my pocket. We were lucky enough to get on the airplane, all thanks to James. To my surprise, he bought us expensive business class tickets. Thanks to his kindness, Meg and I could enjoy the flight very comfortably. And finally, we arrived in Hawaii safely. But there was just one problem. Which hotel would Stan and Kate stay at? I wished I had asked them beforehand about it. Hello, are you Laura and Meg? A man called out to us. Uh, yes, that's right, but... Nice to meet you. When I was being suspicious as to how he knew my name and my daughter's name, he handed me his business card. On it was the name of a well-known logistics company that even I knew. I have heard about you from the chairman of our company. 
Thank you very much for that. Uh, what? The elderly man you helped at the airport is the chairman of our company. Oh, r really? I was so surprised at what he had said. I had no idea that James, who we encountered at the airport, was a chairman of a major company. We will now take you both back to your hotel on the chairman's order. Please enjoy your trip to Hawaii. And then he led us to a black limousine. I had never been on such a car before in my life. Wow, it's amazing! Meg says that and she is totally excited to ride in a luxurious limousine for the first time. I checked many times to make sure my shoes were clean before I got on. The view of Hawaii from the windows were beautiful. It felt like an everlasting summer. At one point, I thought we wouldn't be able to make it, but I'm so glad we were able to come in the end. Meg was stuck to the window and stared out. Then we arrived at a huge hotel. You could tell it was luxurious by the way it looked. But as we arrived, I realized something important. Oh no, I didn't book a room. I mumbled quietly. Oh, please don't worry. We have already reserved a room on the top floor. Hearing what I had mumbled, the man tells me this. But I don't have enough money for this. You don't have to pay anything. We have already paid the bill. Oh, r really? I wonder how far James had instructed the man to take care of us. This VIP treatment left me very confused as I wasn't used to this. After entering the hotel, I was again amazed by the room. It was probably a sweet room. The room was too spacious for just two people. The view of the ocean and the beautiful sunset was breathtaking from the huge windows of the room. It was truly a spectacular view. And we had a dedicated hotel staff member who would serve us if we wanted anything. The food was also gorgeous. I can't even explain it very well as it was too luxurious. They grilled the most expensive steak right in front of us. The food was better than anything I have ever tasted and I was just always impressed. When Meg and I were strolling around the lobby after dinner, we heard some arguing voices coming from the corner. Are they? A man and a woman were arguing with the hotel staff. Yes, it was my husband and my mother-in-law. Hey, what are you both doing here? When I called out to them, they looked at Meg and I. What? Why are you both here? What do you mean? We just came here as planned. You've done such a horrible thing to us. Even though you're the one who suggested we go. Well, that's... Stan looked at Kate as if he wanted to say something. Uh, oh, it was your fault for being late, right? I feel bad about that. But you didn't have to say that we should just camp out. Kate didn't look like she was doing anything wrong, or she's sorry for doing such a horrible thing. I just couldn't forgive them. By the way, why are you guys arguing with the hotel staff? I asked Stan. When I tried to check in, he told me to leave. I don't understand. Stan looked very angry as he said this. Um, is something wrong? I asked the hotel staff. Then the hotel staff began to explain. I heard that these people left our very important and beloved customers behind. And that's unforgivable. I was ordered not to let them stay here at our hotel. Oh, now I get it. James had a great influence on this hotel. The chairman of the big company indeed is a scary guy and you'd never want to be on his bad side. Wh what the hell does he mean? Oh, it's a long story. But what he means is that he can't forgive you both for leaving Meg and I behind. When I said this, Stan and Kate looked very confused. H how the hell does someone from this hotel know about that? Well, I understand Stan's point and why he'd ask that. But knowing the details, I'm not surprised at all. In fact, I even think it's what Stan and Kate deserves. 
Do you know this person? I took out a business card. It belonged to the man who guided me from the airport in Hawaii. Th this is... This is a business card from a major client of ours. My husband turned pale as he took the card with his trembling hands. Kate's face also froze and turned pale. Y you don't mean to tell me that you know the chairman of this company, do you? Of course I know who he is. He suddenly collapsed at the airport, so I saved him. So he booked us a flight to Hawaii and even reserved the hotel room for us. What? Kate fell down and began to tremble. W what's the matter, Mom? He... He is in the same gym club as me, and I see him every once in a while, but everyone worships him. What kind of coincidence is this? I also agreed to stand about this. With that kind of coincidence, I thought that the world is really small. I had no idea that my mother-in-law knew the chairman. But before I heard this from Kate, I already found out about the fact from the chairman himself. When I received the new ticket at the airport, James was the one who noticed a piece of paper that fell out of my pocket. Oh? He picked it up and saw what was written on the paper. He looked at me with surprise. Laura, what in the world is this? Oh, <laughs> that. Well, um, how should I say this? We were left behind by my mother-in-law and husband, yes. How horrible! And how unforgivable. But this name, I've seen it somewhere. Is your mother-in-law's last name Martin? Yes, her name must be Kate Martin. What? You know my mother-in-law? Of course I do. She's also a member of the gym club that I belong to. She doesn't seem like the type of person who would do something like that, but... And this is how it happened. I looked at the two of them with a grin as I thought back on it. It's tough, isn't it? Since you said that you two are going on a trip together, I guess we'll just be on our own then. I'm going to enjoy the trip with Meg. Kate, why don't you just camp out somewhere around here? Enjoy the Hawaiian night without any roof on top. Oh, hey, wait! That's terrible! You are the rudest person ever! Stan and Kate kept on screaming while I turned my back on them. They're just so ridiculous. They were the ones who threw those words at me first, but when I was the one who got back at them with their words, they'd call me terrible and rude. I burst out laughing. Let's go! I urged Meg. Yeah! And Meg took my hand in hers. The exchange between the hotel staff and the two were still going on behind me. Anyways, get out of here. We don't have rooms for you both in this hotel. The hotel staff wouldn't budge. Ugh! Finally, both Stan and Kate left the hotel. So, we enjoyed our trip to Hawaii on our own. Since Meg's love for Stan was almost gone, there was no need to care about him at all. I never expected to be given such a wonderful trip as a gift in return for helping an old man. We actually wanted to thank him from the bottom of our hearts. The trip was over and we returned home safely. It was a really amazing, refreshing trip. Meg seemed to be very satisfied with the trip as well. Now whatever happened to Stan and Kate who were kicked out of that hotel? It seems that the real disaster for them came after they left the hotel. After returning from Hawaii, Stan arrived home tired and worn out. It seems that the chairman's instruction had been spread throughout all the hotels in Hawaii. They really had to camp out in the wild. Whatever that was written on the paper came right at them. And other difficulties awaited Stan and Kate. Stan was suddenly summoned by his boss at his workplace and was told that the contract with James's company was about to be cancelled. And Kate was treated coldly by the other gym club members and she left the club. She was practically expelled from the club. Her only hobby was keeping in shape. 
but this incident must have frightened her so much that she gave up working out and being in shape anymore and now spends most of her time watching TV. Stan and I decided that it would be difficult to continue our marriage and we officially divorced. And of course, the custody for Meg belongs to me. I didn't receive any alimony or child support. My earnings were not much different from Stan's income and I had no problem supporting Meg. I will never see my mother-in-law again. Still, this incident was really strange now that I think about it. By accidentally being late at the airport, I ended up helping the chairman of a large company whom Kate knew about, and thanks to him, I was able to enjoy one of the best trips to Hawaii. In this way, it's more natural to think that I was guided by some fate. Nothing in my relationship with Stan worked out, except for Meg. Maybe there were some miscommunication because of our different schedules at work. But I think this would have been the result, even if I had continued being the housewife, as Stan would prioritize Kate first instead of us. I have no more regrets. I have the most adorable and precious daughter in the world. I don't need anyone else.